Syracuse Orange Men are celebrating more than Halloween this October. They have roared to a frightening 7-0 record, led by Don McPherson, who is costumed as the best all-around quarterback in college football. Teamed with receiver Tommy Kane, they have shocked the country. Leaving coach Dick McPherson with nightly visions of a major bull bid, if his Orange Men can keep this party rolling along. The most familiar mask on the Pitt Panthers belongs to Craig Ironhead Hayward. He is six feet, 280 pounds of bruising running back who gives the term big man on campus new meaning. With a killer defense, the Panthers hope to be the black cats in SU's path. And coach Mike Gottfried knows a win today can propel them toward a bull. It's a bewitching matchup for a Halloween Saturday. Syracuse versus Pitt here on CBS Sports. Just a few square feet of concrete, your favorite beverage, and a big game. And normally, the biggest game in these parts is Pitt Penn State. But this year, there's a new beast of the East. And come on inside Pitt Stadium. Because unbeaten and untied Syracuse, dreaming of a national championship, will face its toughest test of the year, the Pitt Panthers. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I'm Brent Musburger. Well, you know, Syracuse has the hottest quarterback in the land right now. Don McPherson has been on fire the last two weeks against Penn State and Colgate. He has completed 25 of 31 for 576 yards and seven touchdowns. And yet today he'll be matched against a very tough Pitt Panther defense. The Panthers are five and two. Let's bring in Pat Hayden and find out about the other side of the ball. What will Pittsburgh do for an offense today, Pat? Well, this offense hasn't been nearly as productive as Mike Godfrey had hoped this year. And really the problem has been inconsistency at quarterback. Now, Sal Janela will get the start today as he has all year long. But he's been up and down all season, played very well against Notre Dame, but not very well well in their two losses he may be first and we'll send you back to Pittsburgh after this word from your local station stadium and their preferred costume honors their number one player known as Ironhead Craig Hayward 6,000 of those masks have been handed out to the crowd here this afternoon and you know big twist in the mellow fellows honored Hayward with this song 300 pounds a heavenly joy Most people thought I ran into cars with my head when I was a little kid, and, or they broke sticks over my head, which never happened. <laughs> <laughs> I do have bumps and everything, but that's from my mother dropping me. People make fun of his size, though, Brad. He is a load, and Syracuse has a problem because once he gets some momentum going toward the line of scrimmage, he is very difficult to stop. What Syracuse has to do is get some early penetration before he gets too much of that momentum going. Ah, well, it should be fun, and now the unbeaten Orange men roll on to the field here. <laughs> their coach Dick McPherson who has put together a squad that is now taking dead aim at a big bowl and this is the critical game in the season because the rest of his schedule to tell the truth is not that tough but this one is going to be the Panthers have been aiming at this game under their coach Mike Gottfried and just as Syracuse was emotional a couple of weeks ago this team's ready today Kickoff is coming up from Pitt Stadium in just a moment. Football game here this afternoon in Pittsburgh. Forecast beautiful the rest of the afternoon. And uh, 
John Dockery, what about the Syracuse nose man, Ted Gregory? What's his status? Brent, there was a late-breaking note. During the warm-up, Ted Gregory left the field. He was hobbling a little bit, I asked, and they said all he wanted to do was get a new tape job. He came out heavily taped. He was hobbling a little bit. It'll be interesting to see how well he plays. Of course, Syracuse needs him desperately against a man like Ironhead Hayward, so we're going to see. Now back to you. All right, Doc, thank you. And Craig Hayward, of course, the big, talented tailback will aim right at the heart of that Syracuse defense. Jeff Van Horn putting the ball on the tee here. He'll kick it off to Syracuse. The Orangemen receiving. And what's the offensive game plan for the Orangemen here today? Well, you're going to see a combination of option plays and throwing the ball. And few in college football can do it as well as Syracuse. They're very good on the corner on the defense with the option play. So Owens, number 44, set to return, standing on the five, unless they kick away from him. And Ingram's on the other side. two yards in and Ingram says put it down right there for the touchback and let's get McPherson the ball on the 20 for a first and 10. Well let's meet McPherson and the attacking offensive unit at Syracuse. Talented quarterback could be the All-American this year. Running backs good. Solid players. Drummond and Johnston. Johnston's hand not severely injured last week. Kane and Glover superb wide receivers. More backs them up. So those are the main weapons. And Don McPherson, you could expect him to put a little pressure on this pit defense with the option here today. They're very solid in that defensive front. Immediately, he goes to the option and pitches to Drummond. And what a hole. Oh, he barges out across the 40-yard line. Pat, that Pitt Panther defense seemed confused in a 23-yard gain. They had about three players shifting at the last second. They get lined up incorrectly. You see 26 Gats, and he was on the wrong side of the ball. Actually ran himself right out of the play. Gets a nice block by Tommy Kane in number 82. That let Drummond get another five or six yards. A good block there by the wide receiver, Kane. Yeah, let's see what McPherson comes up with here. Got Kane, one of his wide men. And he'll run Drummond deep from that tailback, getting to the outside, and he swatted down there at the 46-yard line. Billy Owens, the safety who grew up in Syracuse, number one, in on that hit that time. There's Owens. Said he wanted to go away from home. That's why he left Syracuse. All in fairness, let's remember that the Syracuse program is not as good as it is this year. Glover and Kane both go to the right side. You can see them as McPherson prepares to take the snap here on this second down. Drummond, he'll throw back to the tight end. Kelly, who's got it. Owens tackles him at the 15-yard line. No, Brett, that's the third pass that Drummond has thrown this year. He's thrown one already for a touchdown. He is three for three on the year. And this is an impressive early uh, drive here by Syracuse. We saw the option play, and now Drummond on the pass back to uh, Pat Kelly. Kelly's number 84, fakes the block. It's a slow release, allows him to get a field. And McPherson, the quarterback, was outside of him open as well. But it's a beautiful throw by Drummond, the tailback. He's 3-3 three three this year, throwing for 101 yards. McPherson keep it. He's down at the 16 as gets Number 26 makes the hit. Here's the offensive line for Syracuse. Pat, how would you evaluate this group? They played very well all year, even though they start two freshmen. Stoffel, the left tackle, is the best player up front. But they were concerned coming in with their youth, but they played well all year. yards to go on this second down. Pearson didn't fool anybody that time. Cornell Smith, 91, led the defensive charge. This is one way to stop the option is get some penetration. Now Smith is right here. He's going to penetrate right through, and McPherson never has a chance really to get down the line and make the play. See, 53 there, John Flannery was supposed to block him, but ran right by him. Good play by Smith. They've got to go to the five-yard line for a first down. Long count. McPherson. McCain incomplete. Jones all over him. Nice call, though, 
Donald Brandt wasn't executed well, but it was a nice call. It was an all-out blitz by Pittsburgh, which you're going to see a lot of today. And that's what you like, a matchup Kane one-on-one -on -one with a defensive back. So they'll have to turn it over now to Tim Vessling. This will be a 36-yard attempt, and the way Syracuse moved the ball down inside the 20, Panthers have to feel happy if they can hold them to a field goal. Six-yard field goal. And Vesling puts Syracuse ahead by three. We've still got 12 minutes to go in the first quarter. The Orangemen strike first. We'll be right back. He came to Pittsburgh from Kansas. Vesling to kick it off after that field goal, which puts Syracuse and Dick McPherson ahead by three points. Billy Owens and Michael Hadley are the two deep men. Hadley there to your left, both back on the goal line. Hadley at the five. There's a hole in the middle. Spins out to the 39-yard line, and Vesseling, the kicker, is forced to get down and make the stop. That's a 33-yard return. The wedge was set up very, very nicely. Here is the pit offense. Sal Janella is the man under the microscope. The big fella, Ironhead, there on your left. Lewis Riddick is a freshman safety converted to fullback. The wide receivers are good if they can get the ball into their hands. Here's the workhorse. They split him far out to the right. And Janela put it up on first down. And he is sacked back on the 35-yard line. That was Dominic. Very, Im in. very important, Brent, how Sal Janela starts this game. They want to get us some confidence early. Watch the nose tackle there, Ted Gregory. The center, Miller, does a real nice job at him. And the right guard, Stepnowski. And I think he was actually injured on the play. Ted Gregory. Dockery reported before the game that he left during calisthenics, went into the locker room. He practiced only one day this week because of the injured knee. That's uh, If he cannot play, that's a big loss for Syracuse. He's one of the best defensive linemen in the country, an Outland uh, Trophy candidate. And again, when you're playing against Ironhead, you need guys, you need the nose tackle in the middle. The backup is Elaine Greer. He's a senior from Van Nuys, California. He'll wear number 92. Gregory is up limping off to the sideline. In center of the pitcher, there is Ted Gregory. Now, Miller, the center from Pittsburgh, is a very good player. He gets some help. You see the left guard push him off. But right there, his knee buckled early. I don't think it was much, it was the block so much as it looked like his knee buckled. Well, the newcomer is in the middle. Again, they split the backs. And Janello will throw it again. Hayward's a fine receiver. They look away from him, and it is incomplete at midfield. Now here's the offensive line, and Pat, how about this group? They have played very well all year long. Anytime you have a guy like Hayward, who's a big back, you need those offensive linemen who stop the penetration, and they've given Ironhead all the room he's needed to gain all the yards. Very solid offensive line. Freshman tight end. Stewart just checked into the game. He's one of the wide receivers, number 30. Reggie Williams, number two, is there. And Bill Osborne, number 12. So three wideouts in the game. And they run. The big fella iron head on the draw. Great call by the Panthers for a first down. Jeff Buskirk brings him down, number 27. 
That is a great call. You do not expect to see a 280-pound tailback get the ball on third and 13. But it was a well-blocked, too. Nobody, as you see, even touches him until really he's already past the first down markers. You see, the guy's got some finesse. He's not just a big guy. Watch the full black by, block by number 42, Prentice Wright. That really gave him the big hole to get through. But you see, good feet for a big guy, 280 pounds. Very good feet. Tailback in a fullback's body, isn't he? Here he comes again. Works up ahead of steam. You know, Brent, Pittsburgh may be the only college football team in the country with a middle linebacker is 60 pounds lighter than the tailback. <laughs> There's some more iron hit at you. Again, the key here is watch if he gets some momentum. If there's no penetration, he gets that full head of steam up. He trips there a little bit. But even if there's somebody in the hole, he's going to gain two or three yards. You have to stop him early if you're going to stop him at all. On second down, Janela to throw again. Under pressure, fumble. And Pittsburgh recovers. Stepnowski gets back. Balls on the ball as Burnett, number 70, jammed the ball three. Well, this is just the kind of start that Mike Godfrey did not want to see Sal Janela get off. Now, this is obviously not his fault. He gets hit from behind by Burnett, who's a very good pass rusher from the backside. That's one of the reasons they put him back there. Heads up play by Stavnoski. They need to get that short little completion of the screen pass so Janela can feel a little bit better about his game. Third and 12. Janela shovels it off to the short man, but they don't even get back to the line of scrimmage that time. David Holmes comes up quickly to make the stop. Number 38 with a fine defensive play, so they will force Pittsburgh to put it away. Standing back on the 35. Tommy Kane waits the punt. The short man, Marcus Paul, went for the fair catch on the 17-yard line. Syracuse leading it by a field goal. And they'll have a first and 10 here in the first quarter when we return. Then come to the Kingdom as Seattle hosts Minnesota tomorrow on CBS Sports. When you're 7-0 and and you've already accomplished your goals, you need new ones. So we asked quarterback Don McPherson, what is Syracuse taking aim at now? I spoke to the team uh, as a captain on, on Tuesday and said that, you know, we've, we've accomplished everything that we set out to do this year, and we have to now take it to another level. We're probably most definitely in a bowl. Uh, we have a winning season uh, on hand, so we know that uh, right now it's, it's whether or not we're going to be complacent with that or take it a step further and go for a national title. The team ahead by a field goal, but they have lost their splendid nose man. Orange is pulled back into the middle of that pit defense, and he gets out to about the 21-yard line. The original line of scrimmage back on the 18, close to a three-yard gain. And Anthony Siragusa, number 98, who did not start this game because of an injury, steps into that defensive line. There is a young man on the field, number 93, Mark Spindler. He's one of the most talented freshman defensive linemen in the country. He's out of Scranton, Pennsylvania. You want to keep an eye on him this afternoon. You're going to hear his name a long time in the next four years. But Pearson can't get it off. Gatson coming from the backside, number 26. That is 18 and a half sacks. That's right. 18 and a half sacks for Gatson. Pat, how in the world does he get it done? It is absolutely phenomenal what they do. Actually, they do a lot of the things that the Chicago Bears do. At this time, he just comes right off the corner, and he's got the speed to run you down from the outside. He's on the track team here at, uh, at uh, Pitt. There's what he has accomplished here. One of the defensive leaders. We have 7.50 to go. First quarter, Syracuse 3, Pittsburgh nothing. Show blitz. McPherson under pressure gets it off. Complete at the 30 yard line. Tommy Kane, his favorite wide receiver, number 82, a 14 yard completion. McPherson to Kane. 
Pittsburgh was lined up in what they call their Panther defense. And again, it's the same look that the Chicago Bears popularized a few years ago. But if he can get just a little bit of time and give Tommy Kane an opportunity to work on that defensive back, he's too much too dangerous, I think, to cover one-on-one. -on -one. Pitt bets they can get to the quarterback before he can get the ball off. There's Gatson. He goes to the wide side of the field because of his speed defensively. Johnston. Huge hole. He bolts out to the 45-yard line. Johnston, I'm sure folks in Syracuse have heard the story repeatedly, but those of you who don't live in that area may not have caught up with it because of an incident. Up there in anger, he hit an automobile window. He smashed the glass, and the cut resulted in three stitches in that hand. And we asked Coach McPherson, uh, what about Daryl Johnson? He said, I'll promise you one thing. He will not fumble <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> he said it just like that. McPherson, he's a great drop back passer. Going down to Kane. Kane's got it inside the 10-yard line. He split the seams on the defense, and Jones had to come over and finally bring him down. A 49-yard gain. Great combination, McPherson to Kane. Boy, these guys have been doing this all year long. Again, the, pit de the Panther defense, you see how many guys blitzing inside? There's no free safety there. That's an easy post route. Six, uh, Gary Richards squatted. He expects Kane to run an inside route, but Kane ran right by him on the post pattern. Now, Kane is picking on high-class defensive backs. We talked to some of the scouts about the talent around college football this year. They will mention both of those players. You just saw Kane get in between. Now they show the wishbone down inside the 10-yard line. McPherson keeps it and battles his way back to the four-yard line. They're indicating fumble on the Pittsburgh side of the ball, but the official says no, Syracuse possession. McPherson held it when we whistled it dead. We want to get an update on uh, Ted Gregory. Let's go down to John Dockery. John? Brent, I spoke to the team doctor about Ted Gregory, who came off the field. He was not in serious pain. They took the tape off his knee. They put ice on that left knee. And what the doctor told me simply is, Gregory will not be back right now. He didn't rule out the possibility that he'll be back later on in the game. That's all I have for now. I'll keep you posted. All right, John, thank you. On the second down, they put Barnes at the other halfback spot. They run Drummond to the three-yard line. Brent, the, the Pittsburgh defense has been very tough in the first half down by the goal line. Only the very first play of their season, they gave up a touchdown, but it's the only touchdown in the first half they've given up. Good defensive penetration. They see the inside defensive tackle just fight off the guard's block, and he made the play. Spindler and Carter inside. Gregory watching from the Syracuse sideline. Third and goal. Now they go to the I formation with Johnston in front of Drummond. They run the option, and McPherson goes in for the touchdown. So the son of a former New York City policeman scores the afternoon's first touchdown, and he continues to be red hot. And you know, this Syracuse team is amazing. Every week, it's one big play after another. We saw it against Penn State, of course, last week against Colgate. And again, the big pass play to Tommy Kane. Vesseling with an extra point record still going. 207. that's an NCAA record. Great holder in Todd Philcox, who's a backup quarterback. And he's still alive and well as Dick McPherson's orange men jump out in front, 10 to nothing. Again, the option play inside the 10-yard line, so very difficult to defend. It's all McPherson's. Everybody was accounted for but him. He bowls it in from two yards out. The game of the season for Hayden Fry and the Hawkeyes will continue to keep an eye on that one. Meanwhile, here the Pittsburgh defense regrouping early. They are down by 10. Hadley and Owens set to return the bezzling kick. Hadley at the five. Had a big hole in the middle the last time. Not this time. 
but he finds one slanting to the left and gets out to the 29-yard line with Rob Thompson, number 25, bringing him down. Tomorrow at 12.30, we'll have the NFL today, and then we'll certainly want to tell you what it means. I would say it's Paradise Lost. He's gone, folks. He was traded in Indianapolis. And then after we give you the details of the Eric Dickerson trade, we will have these games. It's a doubleheader afternoon. We've got three late games. Many of you will watch Minnesota against Seattle, in case you have not heard now. Dickerson to Indianapolis. Cornelius Bennett, their top draft choice, goes to Buffalo. The Rams get two ones, a two, a three, and a running back by the name of Greg Bell. A three-team trade. Will McDonough will have all the details tomorrow. Janella can't get it off, and the crowd grows restless here as Paul Fraze brings him down. One of Janello's problems has been he gets locked in on one receiver. If that receiver doesn't come open, he just doesn't come off quickly enough. That time he was looking downfield, but his secondary receiver was Hayward. Out of the backfield, it was wide open for about a, oh, a seven or eight yard gain. Here's Hayward. Fumble, Syracuse recovers. Freiburg jumps on the loose ball, and the Orange men explode early here in Pittsburgh. Amazing thing about uh, Ironhead, he has not fumbled the ball much this year. Only three fumbles in 219 carries, which is remarkable. This time, he takes the ball on the counter, and again, he's got that momentum going toward the line of scrimmage. He's got the ball a little loosely there, holding it loosely. It popped right out. I think Bavaro, number 59, popped it out, and Freiburg made the recovery. But he has been quite good in not fumbling the ball so far this year. Fumble by Owens, and Wall recovers for the Panthers. That is a very big play for Pittsburgh because their offense is not the type of offense they can come back on the way down. That ball was right there. It looked like Michael Owens was looking downfield instead of putting his hands on the ball. Wall to make the recovery. A big play by the pit defense. And now an important series for Sal Janella. As Jerry Wall gets it right back for the Panthers. Prentice Wright, the fullback, set in front of Hayward. They come right back with Hayward the left side of his offensive line and you can see how many white jerseys it takes to hold the big fella down and you also see that the, even though there wasn't much of a hole there really wasn't much of a crack at all but he still picked up three yards and that's the philosophy Mike Godfrey has if the quarterback can't get the ball to receiver give the ball to Hayward he averages 31 carries a game and he'll pick you up three yards four yards each time this is second down pressure he released his backs that time and he did not get the protection he needed as Rob Burnett number 70 hauls him down that is the fourth sack of Janela well what a game Burnett is playing here so far he's the sophomore out of Corum New York 6'3 260 pounds and five sacks coming in they put him of course on the back side of the quarterback where he can get the upfield rush against the offensive tackle. Remember, this Syracuse team is without two key defensive players. Ted Gregory left early, and Terry Wooden, number 90, did not even make the trip. He is that linebacker who played so well against Penn State. Janela needs 12 yards for the first. Drops it off to Hayward. And he is short of it. David Holmes got the first lick in. Then Greer came over to clean up. And the Panthers will punt it away. So the sophomore punter John Rasp. And Tommy Kane will be the return man for Syracuse. He's standing back there at the 24 yard line. Out of Montreal, Canada. All around athlete. Hockey, baseball, basketball, and of course football.
Here it comes. Cut off and surrounded beautifully at the 20 yard line. Tremendous coverage that time. A 46 yard punt. Two yard return. We've got an update. Let's go to New York and here's Jim Nance. Jim. All right, Brent down 13. Backup quarterback Dave Cram has come off the bench for Indiana and sparked the offense. Here into the corner to Ernie Jones. Jones 11th touchdown of the season. And now Indiana's on top early fourth. And BC has upset Tennessee 20 to 18. Let's go back to Brent and Pat. Well, that is something. Uh, the two toughest parts of the country this year. If you measure the games played out of their conferences would be the Southeastern Conference and what we refer to as East Indies. We'll get into that as the afternoon progresses. McPherson turns right into the arms of Wall who has come up with two big plays here. Taking him down at the 19 yard line and now it'll be second down and Walker is there too. There's what I mentioned. Now the East Independence, and we have the nine teams competing for the Lambert Trophy. We do not count the games that they play against each other. And you can see how much better the Southeastern Conference has been than anyone else this year. But today, Boston College upsets Tennessee. Inside the 50-yard line, he's out at the 45, a 36-yard run. And a terrific call. Uh, Zeke Gatz, number 26. This has been one of the reasons it's working is they play this Panther defense. They like they bring three defensive linemen to cover the guard, the center, and the other guard. And what these guys would do will come up field. He'll have to block him. This man will come up field. He has to block him. When he comes here, Gatson comes right up the middle. That time the draw ran right by him against that Panther defense. Good call. Syracuse splits the tight end out. Johnston into the middle of the defense. Gets to about the 43-yard line. Johnson's one of those fullbacks, again, whose stats really don't show up much at the end of the game, but he's so important for this offense because the combination of Johnson running up the middle and McPherson on the perimeter of the defense of the option, then throwing the pass, that's what makes him very difficult to defend. Second and eight, and Michael Owens checks in as the Syracuse tailback. They run the option, and McPherson battles his way to the 35 yard line and perhaps still another first down depending on where they spot it. Yes he's got it. And Miami running it up on East Carolina. Speaking of running it up and those two are headed for a collision on November 28th down in the Orange Bowl. And there's a bit of a surprise Boston College beating Tennessee. Big series here for the Pitt defense. They must slow them down or stop into a field goal. Their offense is not the team kind that comes back well. This is Owens. John Carter made the stop. Carter's kind of an individualist. He's the only guy out there with black high tops. There they are. With the time running out here on the first quarter. Syracuse 10. Pittsburgh nothing and college football on CBS will return after this message and a word from your local stations. And that's what ignited the Syracuse offense in the opening 15 minutes and now they're on the march again leading by 10 points. Again they split that tight end out and they run Owens on the draw play. He hammers his way inside the 30 yard line. So the offensive line of Syracuse doing a splendid job here in the early going. Sims, Bednars, Garrett, Flannery, and Stoppel are opening it up. Big block by the right guard, uh, Blake Bednars. He's right here. He's going to put a, a, a nice uh, block to allow the draw play to pick up four or five yards. He sees the inside charge, just pushes him right away, and that allows Michael Owens to come behind the block. And again, on draw plays, you could push your man either inside or outside, whichever way he's going. Third and short with Robert Drummond checking in. Glover goes in motion. McPherson under pressure. Look at how elusive he is. Finally hits the tight end. And Kelly scores. 27 yards, but that's the added dimension of Don McPherson. And the reason.
reason why he deserves a chance in the NFL. A lot of folks have wondered about him as a pro quarterback, but when you can create something out of nothing like he just did, then I'll tell you something, he's a player. And I'll tell you one other thing, Pat Kelly, the tight end, is one of the unsung heroes on this team. Now, he's averaging nearly 15 yards a catch as a tight end. Here's the athleticism of McPherson. You can't defend this, obviously. Gatson has got some awfully good speed, but he still gets the ball off. Well caught by Kelly. Shows pretty good speed getting the end zone. Kelly recruited as a quarterback. He's out of Webster, New York. 6'6", six, six senior. Esseline was hooking that extra point, but he hooks it good. Well, that streak was in jeopardy there for a couple of seconds, but it's good. And it's 17-0. Syracuse exploding again. 35. He has thrown eight touchdown passes. And Billy Owens, the safety for Pittsburgh, explained why McPherson is so tough to defend. His ability to run the ball uh, is what's, what is so threatening to uh, defenses. You know, we've played against uh, some quarterbacks that can pass, and we've played against some that can run. But, you know, when he can drop back in the pocket, and if there's nobody open, he can turn into a touchdown from anywhere on the field. That uh, puts a great strain on your defense. And he is keeping that strain on the defense to the tune of 17 first half points right now. He's out of Long Island. Without a doubt, he is the player of the year in the eastern part of the country, and now he becomes a candidate for the Heisman Trophy. Speaking of that, Tim Brown, the leader in the eyes of many of the voters, had a big afternoon against the Naval Academy. Got a pass for a touchdown, rush twice for 35 yards, gained more than 100 yards receiving. Bessling boots it deep, Hadley at the five. at the 25. Let's go downstairs, and here's John Dockery. Doc? Brent, you and Pat were talking about the quarterback situation in McPherson's future. Well, there was another quarterback in the 70s uh, who was much like McPherson. And as a matter of fact, McPherson broke all of Bill Hurley's, your records, at Syracuse. You were a defensive back when you went to the pros, Bill Hurley. What about McPherson's future? Well, I think the NFL's changed a little bit, John, from 10 years ago, 8 years ago, where they were looking at the pure big drop-back pass. And now they're taking a the guy who can make things happen. And with Don McPherson's athletic ability, I don't see how any of the teams can uh, not take a look at him. Well, it would have been nice if he left you a record. Now back up to you, Brent. <laughs> All right, with Janella and the pit offense in a deep hole here. They run Hayward on that draw play. You bust out to the 35-yard line, close to a first down on that run. Freiburg brings him down. And you can see the difference. Syracuse... 217 yards for total offense, and McPherson has thrown for one touchdown and run for a second. <laughs> Meanwhile, Janella and the pit offense looking for their first score. Hayward plus one tackle, the first man can't bring him down. And it took three Syracuse defenders to finally lower the boom after 40. Here are the defenders who are doing a job so far this afternoon. Fraze and Burnett. Burnett with two and a half. Number big plays. David yep. Bavaro is Mark Bavaro's brother. Mark the tight end with the Giants. John Dominic playing today because of Wooden's injury and Freiburg there too. And they run the fullback off that fake. Burnett brings him down. It's one of the problems this pit offense has is they've been much too one. You can't squeeze out Hughes being one-dimensional. They're going to have to get more out of their passing game. They have Osborne on the right and Williams on the left. Osborne out of bounds at the 41-yard line. 16-yard gain. I tell you, it is tough as a quarterback when the fans are booing you, which they are for him now. He's had some adversity here in the first half, but he hung in the pocket, and then he, now he finds Osborne, number 12, at the top of the screen there, slips right in behind the safety. Hold on the number. 
and he picks up a three or four extra yards. I like this Bill Osborne. He is a tough receiver. We'll go over the middle for you. Right now in at fullback. Riddick is out. Here comes Ironhead. How big was that, Patty? <laughs> it's about eight and three quarters, I'm sure. Eight and how many? Eight and three quarters. Oh, that is something. Hey, let's go down for an injury update on Gregory. Here's John Dockery, John. Thank you, Brent. You see Gregory on the sidelines over there sitting down. He just told me that tomorrow they're going to do an orthogram on the knee. They can't seem to find any serious damage right now. He's happy about that, but it doesn't look like he's going to play the rest of the game. You see it's taped up with ice on that left knee. We won't see Bill Gregory the rest of the day. So the outland finalist is out, and Elaine Greer, 92, has done a good job so far in the middle. Off the fake. Janela with time and a diving catch at the 20-yard line, and there's your man again, Pat. Yeah, I, I like this Bill Osborne. You know, he's got a broken finger. He's got seven stitches in his chin, Bill Osborne does. He was knocked unconscious early in the year, but he's the kind of guy that really will go over the middle. We top of the screen. He's running the inside route. A lot of guys give you the short arm, the alligator arms, when they go over the middle. Not Bill Osborne. Makes a nice catch, nice adjustment on the ball. You know, most wide receivers are wimps. Not Billy Osborne. Excuse me? <laughs> most of those guys are wimps. Won't go over the middle. You know, alligator arms. <laughs> checked in and they run Hayward on the draw. Boy, is he tough to bring down. He battled his way and there's a penalty flag thrown too after the hit. It was thrown by the back judge at the 13-yard line. Eric Seaman is limping off the field. He's the freshman tight end. Played very well for Pitt this year. So we've had our first penalty here. This oh, afternoon. boy. Personal foul against Pittsburgh. Just what they didn't need because they need to score badly. Tell you what, though, Brent, the nice thing from Pittsburgh's standpoint is that Sal Janela has hung in the pocket, faced some adversity here in the first half, and now has begun to develop well and play well, much like he did against Notre Dame. So the officials mark it back to the 29-yard line. They'll have second down. They must go to the 11-yard line for a first down. He calls all the plays. Always has when he was the head coach at Kansas. Do it Pitt Stadium along with John Dockery and Pat Hayden. I'm Brent Westbrook. Pittsburgh in a deep hole, trailing by 17, but threatening. Janela gets to the 22-yard line. That was Prentice Wright, the fullback, on the outside, blocking for him. Let's get an update from Jim Nance, Jim. Well, Brent, Chuck Hartley bringing back the Hawkeyes with about nine minutes to go. This pass to tight end Mike Flagg set up a one-yard dive by David Hudson. Two-point conversion, no good. 26-21 there. The Iowa's winning. And also West Virginia winning at Penn State. 21-18 with about eight minutes to go. Let's go back to Brenton Penn. You know, I'm not shocked about that. West wow. Virginia has played very well the last few weeks. Yeah, Quietly, they've been improving, and Penn State decimated with all those injuries on defense. Now Janela pulling out under pressure, sort of shovels it off into Riddick's hands. And Riddick down at the 21-yard line, so this will be a fourth down. Now, Sal Janela is actually running out of the pocket before he has to. He's feeling the pressure much too early. I think if he stayed in there, hung in there a little bit, he'd have more time to find a receiver. So Jeff Van Horn will attempt a field goal to get Pittsburgh on the scoreboard. It's a 37-yarder. Interesting story, Van Horn. For his 16th birthday, his parents gave him some goal posts, put it out the front yard. He's very good on the five-yard kick. <laughs> this one's a little further than his front yard. <laughs> he had a big yard. Yes, he did. <laughs> Makes it pay off. <laughs> it's 17-3. We've got 9-19 to go in the first half, and we'll be right back. 
leading the pit 17-3, and those Bull Scouts are getting an eyeful here, Mr. Hayden. Well, the amazing thing to me, Brent, about this Syracuse de team is that they play very good defense. And when a team plays very good defense, usually the offense is very conservative. But they've come out big play after big play all season long. Well, this pit defense could use a big player, too, right now. Dan Horn will put the ball on the tee. Set to return for the Orange men. A couple of pretty good runners. Owens, number 44. Next to him is Chris Ingram. He's one of the defensive backs. Let's see if they give Owens a chance here. Cornell Holloway bringing him down. Well, we're looking at the best in the East, Syracuse, this afternoon. And next week, we'll bring you one of the talented teams from the South. It'll be an either-or situation. And here are the possibilities. We'll have Florida State at Auburn, or we will be in Jacksonville, Florida, for the world's, what do they call it, the biggest cocktail party? Outdoor cocktail party. 2.30 Eastern time. Here it's Don McPherson, who is baffling that pit defense. Incomplete and perhaps thrown away because he was under intense pressure that time. Kane was breaking to the side. But boy, is he crafty back there and hard to get a lick on. Possessions under McPherson. See the one fumble. That's another reason they're seven and zero. They have not turned the ball over much. I think one of the great statistics for quarterback: what 15 touchdown passes and only seven interceptions. That's a great ratio. Johnston is fullback 32. And they use him. Defense was ready for that play. John Carter, number 89. Third and eight or nine. This is a big uh, halftime in about nine minutes left. They need to block a punt. They think they can. Get them right back in the ball game. on that pass watch the kind of protection he gets and he steps up right in the pocket and when he gets time and he steps up in the pocket he's got a fine arm the short drop this time that averts the pressure a nice post pattern there by Williams I tell you he did a nice job of catching the ball because he knew the free safety was going to hit him Hayward three Syracuse defenders hammer him Ward and Bavaro 
You know, even though Hayward is six feet tall, I swear when he's running it, he's about 2'7". Because he gets so low to the ground, that's why it's tough to get to his legs. If you take a look at what Pittsburgh has accomplished this season, there's one glaring fact about the scoreboard. They have not scored in the second half. It is possible that Hayward gets worn down. We're talking about a 280-pound running back. Second down, they've rested him a little bit more in the first half of this game. Now, again, Janela quickly steps out of the pocket, but he turns it into a gain as Holmes tackled him on that far sideline. Well, he took on David Holmes. Give it his Jim McMahon uh, impersonation. He was attempting to get a first down when he turned into Holmes, but he left himself about a yard short. Now, you would think, folks, at third and one, that everybody in the house knows where the ball is going. Hey, would you love to see a play action pass? And if he goes up over the top, remember, it is not Iron Head, but Air Iron. He nicknamed himself. He gets off the ball quickly, too. Well, he was right off the ball on the snap count. There's no way you're going to stop him for less than one yard. There's plenty of time here in the first half. 6.26. The free safety, number 10, 200 pounds, and he sees 280 coming at him. You don't really blame him too much. Figured, hey, he's already got the first down. This is a tailback who has been involved in 50% of the pit plays this year, and that's too many. And nobody knows it better than Coach Godfrey and his assistants. They needed a more varied attack. And then, of course, they fell behind, and so they have had to pass. Lost their freshman tight end, Seaman, because of an injury. Hayward, they're starting to use him as the workhorse now. He battles his way down to the 30-yard line against Marcus Paul and Derek Ward, numbers 10 and 52. Now, Seaman will play a little bit with that bruised knee, we understand. All right, 11 carries for 62 yards for Ironhead. And one thing Syracuse has not really done is stop the, the momentum when he gets started. When he gets started, when he gets moving toward the offensive line of scrimmage, it's very difficult to stop him for less than three. This is Riddick. He gets to the 22-yard line for the first down. Now, Riddick, one of the talented freshmen here at Pittsburgh, he came in as a safety. He will go back to the defensive unit next year. But because of injuries, they've had to use him at fullback. Great story about Lewis Riddick. He was in high school, of course, a year ago, and he would not go on recruiting trips on Fridays in this class because he had a perfect attendance record. Good student, 3.7. So he waited for all his classes to be over before he would leave on Fridays. Showed some intelligence on that last play, didn't he? Quickly stepped to the outside where there was daylight. Dropped by Osborne. Should have had it at the 15-yard line. He simply dropped the ball. You don't see that much out of Osborne. The ball, again, well thrown by Janela. And I give Janela some credit because he has known that the pressure's been on him really since before the Notre Dame game that uh, Mike Godfrey might make a change sometime this season. It's tough to play quarterback that way. He's of Filipino and Hawaiian descent, and he asked me yesterday to be remembered to his parents and friends and family out in California. He was a junior college whiz, and I gotta tell you, he sounded just a little homesick to me yesterday when I was talking to him. Been in a tough spot here this year. Second and 10. Coming after him. Oh, gotta get rid of that ball. Got to get rid of that ball. Kept it and ran out of bounds. Jeff Mangrum in pursuit, number 28. They brought the safety in after him. Yeah, well, his wide receivers really didn't give much help either, though. When they see a quarterback in trouble, they have to come back. But he gave himself, oh, what a 10 or 20-yard gain. Paul Fraze jumped in the air, and that convinced him to take the 15-yard loss, which was a mistake, rather yeah. than just throwing the ball out of bounds and getting back to the line of scrimmage. That play has really hurt the pit attack. Actually, not only trying to get some of it back, 
complete over the middle. Down to the 17-yard line. It'll be short of a first down, but it will give them a field goal opportunity as Osborne, remember, who dropped it on first down, comes back with a 21-yard gain. And here comes Van Horn. Billy Osborne has made three or four tough catches. He is the slot receiver on the post pattern inside. But Billy Osborne has made three or four tough catches over the middle. Again, good protection for Janela on third and long. Well covered. There was three white jerseys around him. The thread of the needle. Good concentration by Osborne. This will be a 34-yard field goal attempt by Van Horn. Osborne, the holder. And he misses it. Now, the crowd didn't like the play call to begin with, but it was a long four yards for the first down. So Gottfried played the percentages and, and went ahead. Let's present this week's Toyota Leadership Award. These are the players who have been singled out by the coaching and faculty for their performance in the areas of academics and citizenship. Paul Frey is from Syracuse. He's a psychology major from Barrington, New Hampshire. And Zeke Gadsden from Pitt. Now, Zeke is a business major from Frogmore, South Carolina. And Toyota donates a check in the amount of $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. Owens, the tailback for Syracuse. And they battered Johnston right straight ahead from the fullback spot, bringing the clock down inside of four minutes here in the first half. Syracuse is getting way too much on first down. If we've seen the fullback Johnson who picked up all about three and a half yards there. We've also seen McPherson throw the ball deep on first down, and he's also run the option. We're picking up way too much yardage on first. Well, again, they split Kelly, the tight end, away from the line. They're confident that that offensive line, the five men there in the middle, can hold off the rush. They run Owens on the draw, and he's got daylight. First down at the 36-yard line on a 12-yard burst by young Michael Owens. Terrific game plan here by Syracuse. When you have a blitzing defense, you run the draw play. The middle linebacker, Jerry Asoski, number 55, is going to run right past him. He's going to blitz right there. See him 55 in the middle of the screen? He wasn't sure whether the quarterback had it or Michael Owens had it. But that's the second time a linebacker has blitzed right past the draw play. John Flannery, the left guard, with a big block that time as McPherson holds on. Talked about what Syracuse is doing on first down. Six yards they've been averaging on first down. Makes it a lot easier for McPherson. Clock inside of three minutes and a 17-3 Syracuse lead here in the first half. Glover splits to the right. Tommy Kane couldn't hold on with a diving effort there. It's a nice call. It was a little option pass after they had run the post pattern earlier. Kane faked the post and ran the in route, was open. The ball was just underthrown. Jim Nance will have the Prudential College football report at halftime. No. Boston College upsetting Tennessee. And of course, the big one down south tonight will involve that Florida team. to the corner. That's a great run for the first down on third and long. They are the best team at third and long of any ball club we've seen this year. We saw some. Yeah, they are incredible on uh, third and long. We saw them on two third longs for touchdowns against Penn State. In the added dimension of the running quarterback, the option play on third and 13, they ran the option and he easily picked it up. So that game involving Florida tonight will be Auburn and Florida. Rob Moore checks in at wide receiver. Quick pitch to Owens. Penalty marker is thrown at 45 yard line. Friend, I think they called the clip on uh, Daryl Johnson, number 32, the fullback. Official was right there. Offense with a clip. I thought he was in the NFL. Yeah, just gave say. the number. 
It's right. been a rough week for Daryl Johnson. Right at the frame, you're going to see Daryl Johnson, number 32 there. He just pushed him out of the way from behind. Good call by the official. And potentially a break for the Pittsburgh team. What they need is a force a punting situation and get a block. And perhaps get a score before halftime. What do you think, Pat? Should they give the numbers? College of No, I don't think so. Probably. I don't really like it much in uh, pro football. It's a negative kind of stat. It's usually against linemen. It's the only time you hear from them. Yeah, but it helps the officials out. The coaches are always screaming. Who was it? Who was it? What was his number? Well, Iowa. After falling behind, leading 29-21. The Big Ten. We'll give Michigan State a chance if they can do business against Ohio State. Now Syracuse hoping they can go unbeaten all the way. Maybe something would happen to Miami and they could wind up in the Orange Bowl against the winner of Nebraska, Oklahoma, but those are dreams. Two minutes left. Ah, McPherson sliding into the outside. They get to midfield. Kane. Richard tackles him there. One of the things this Syracuse offense does so well is they really spread the ball around. We've seen Kane catch the ball a couple of big plays. Pat Kelly, the tight ends, caught a couple of big passes today. Drummond's had a couple of big draw plays. And, of course, McPherson. Tough to defend when you have four or five guys you have to be concerned about. And the crowd is a little flat in Pittsburgh because the home team fell behind here early. Syracuse got them just where they like them. They run the draw play with Johnston. situation, aren't they? 15-yard gain there. Pittsburgh has not stopped the draw play yet. The linebackers are running right past the guy carrying the ball. Again, this is about the fourth draw we've seen Syracuse have some success with. Actually, a good block there by the center, John Garrett, number 56. Osofsky misses the tackle. And there's Daryl Johnson for the big game. You know, Olsovsky is only about 215 pounds. That's tough for a middle linebacker. Hold up the point of attack. You know, they run Drummond. Actually, that would check that. That was Chris Barnes, number 39, who checked in. Drummond was on the field, number 36, but Barnes was the ball carrier. Brett, you me me mentioned Jerry Yashovsky is interesting. He's only recruited by two schools. Carnegie Mellon <laughs> being the other one. And when the coaches at Pitt heard that, they said, wait a minute. Maybe we better check this young man. But they gave him a scholarship, and he's paid off for it. We'll be right back. Teams and players to watch. Two Eastern, three Pacific, right here on CBS Sports. Pat Riley we'll talk about whether or not the Los Angeles Lakers can break the jinx and repeat as NBA champions. I swear they just finished the seventh game, didn't they? They're starting again, huh? National Hockey League has been playing for six weeks. 32 seconds here in the first half. 17-3. Pearson completed the 20-yard line. Glover and a penalty flag down after the 12-yard gain. Roughing the passer. Well, we get word that Penn State rallied. Blair Thomas, who was held in check by this Syracuse defense, explodes for 181 yards. Boy, this Syracuse team appears to be for real. The more the scores roll in. Well, they're absolutely right. Everybody questions their schedule because they play a lot of Eastern teams that most people throughout the country don't know. But as we pointed out earlier, this Eastern league that they play in, not the league, but the Eastern teams they play are tough. Obviously, Penn State's a pretty good football team still. And there's the leader of this ball club. You know, it's amazing for a quarterback to be able to run the option and throw the ball as accurately as he does. Brings him up to the line with the 23 seconds to go. from McPherson. So the hottest combination in college football 
continues its march toward a possible unbeaten season. What a story Syracuse is becoming. This is Tommy Kane's 11th touchdown run. Now, this was set up earlier in the game. He ran a post route. And you see he faked the post pattern right there to Kane, and then Kane ran the corner. And he easily beat Quinton Jones, number seven. That was good play calling set up earlier in the game. to their record-breaking extra point streak. Take a close look at these two schools, Syracuse University and the University of Pittsburgh. Since 1870, Syracuse University has offered those seeking a higher education the opportunity to share in its rich tradition of academic excellence and diversity. Over 300 different programs are offered by the university's 17 schools and colleges. Many of the programs, including those of the Newhouse School of Public Communications and the Maxwell School of Citizenship, enjoy international reputations. Syracuse University, the education of a lifetime. Fake by Don McPherson. This is a great fake. He drops back and he fakes the ball right now, and Kane, in the meantime, is faking the post pattern. There's the fake and the corner bit on it. Now watch Kane, he's right down here. He comes down, and while he is, the quarterback is pump faking, he fakes there and breaks out to the corner. Great execution by the Syracuse team. Again, good protection as well. There's the pump fake. The corner, Jones bites on the fake, and Kane makes the easy catch for the touchdown. That's well executed. I miss the noise of the carrier dome. <laughs> Bessling kicks it on the ground with time running down. Takes a high hop into Hadley's hands. He spins free and gets to the 39-yard line. Good return. some questions about this Syracuse offense. They said that perhaps they were beating up on injured teams like Penn State, but not here today. They have taken on Pittsburgh, and the crowd roars at Darnell Dickerson. Number 15 makes his first appearance with eight seconds to go. I don't think you can entirely blame Sal Janela. The defense has not played real well. Well, Osborne dropped a big pass on first down on that last drive, and they misfired on a field goal, but he did step out of bounds on that critical 15-yard loss on that sequence. Dickerson is a true freshman. He is the quarterback of the future here at Pittsburgh. He's built along the lines of Randall Cunningham. He's the star of the Philadelphia Eagles, but Dick McPherson's Syracuse Orangemen are in solid control as McPherson's leadership comes through again. He has thrown for two touchdowns, and he has run for the third. As a result, Syracuse hopes to stay unbeaten. Here he is finding his tight end, Kelly. And Jim Nance will be back for the College Football Report after this message and a word from your local stations. To come out and play a little bit better in the second half. Well, thank you, Coach, and good luck. Okay, Brent. All right, Doc, and uh, Pat Hayden, your observations about that first half. Well, I think one of the interesting things about the Syracuse team, we talked about it, they're so difficult to defend because they spread the ball around so many different guys have their hands on the ball. There's what you look at. I look at those one, two, three, four, five guys carrying the ball or catching the ball, and it's very difficult to double team or try to take one player out of the game. All right, we'll come back with the second half right after this message and a word from your local stations. In Syracuse will kick it off to start the second half. Don McPherson, in case you just joined us, passed for two touchdowns, one of them Tommy Kane, and ran for a third. Now it's Hadley, and he's done a good job returning the ball for the Panthers. Hammered down at the 25-yard line, but he's not easy to bring down, Mr. Hayden. Well, Hadley's had a very good first half, one of the bright spots, really, on special teams. Now here's Darnell Dickerson, so there'll be no red shirt from the former standout out of Detroit, Michigan. Played at Martin Luther King High School. He was a great all-around athlete. Threw for 56 touchdowns in high school. He could play basketball, baseball, and here he is. He took his first snap at the end of the first half, and now he'll start the second half. And it's all uphill for Darnell. 
He's a runner. He pitches to Hayward. Ironhead on first down. Penalty flag is thrown on the play. You know, in certain res respects, Dickerson really has nothing to lose because you aren't expecting a whole lot out of him in his first game. A freshman, you're down to a very good football team, so he can play it loose. Halloween? It is Halloween, <laughs> isn't it? Very much so. <laughs> We could hope for good things. Mike Gottfried is very high in him. He thinks he'll be the quarterback from this snap forward for the next four years. You'll see him playing the rest of the year, I'm sure. Gives you the added dimension. He's got very good speed in the corner of the defense. Dickerson trying to ignite a fire. That was one of the complaints about Janella. And they didn't bend down into the huddle and fire up the unit around him. I thought Janela threw the ball very well here today. I don't think you can blame him completely. I didn't think he, get, he got real good protection. Yeah, it was four sacks against him, and his defense didn't play real well either, Brent. But this young man does give them an added dimension. He can take off. Here's Hayward. Swing into the outside and run out of bounds on that far side over there by Holmes, who's done a good job in that secondary. He doesn't mind taking on Ironhead one-on-one, -on -one, does he? Osborne bringing the play in from the sidelines along with Riddick. Coach Gottfried substituting two and three men. Hey, when you're a DB, you hope the linebacker gets to Haywood before you have to. receiver it didn't seem now he's on to scramble incomplete you're going to see a lot of that with the young man while he's learning good discipline defense there by Syracuse the defensive backs when a quarterback is standing or scrambling around the most difficult thing for a secondary to do is to stay in their zones and that's exactly what they did they've done that all year long been very disciplined Nobody came open, even with that much time. Syracuse lost its talented nose guard. Ted Gregory went down early in the game because of that knee injury. He couldn't play. Elaine Greer, number 92, has stepped in. He's done well. Diving catch there by Osborne at the 48-yard line. Good for a first down. So Dickerson moves the chains with a third down completion, and that'll pick the crowd up here a little bit. They've got some enthusiasm into the game. And Billy Osborne knew right where the first down marker was. We've seen so many times this year, receiver not picking up the first down on a third down situation, but there Osborne did. Ran the right, right at the right depth. Eric Seaman, the freshman, tight end for Pittsburgh. He's playing here in the second half. He missed a couple of series in the first half because of an knee injury. The pitch to Ironhead. Turns the corner and crashes to the 42-yard line. So it'll be second and short. Good first down run by Hayward. That's a light workload for him. Love him in this town. <laughs> There's no the iron head right there. It's quite a character. Writes the fullback. They go for all of it on second and one. And he overthrew the wide receiver, Stewart. A bad call obviously in this stage of the game it's a giveaway down you've got a strong arm quarterback who's been dying to play and a very good speed outside with Michael Stewart number 30 threw the ball well that's a Sid Gilman, Gilman type call and he's here working with coach Godfrey that's an NFL call second and short go for the end zone Sid Gilman's been helping with all the passing this year he's a little disappointed that they haven't been too productive no! you know who's coming here there's the first down his way to the 35-yard line. He ran tough that time. Marcus Paul, 10, in on the tackle. Get a touchdown here. We might have a ball game yet. And Haywood get, gets going upfield. Very light on his feet. He 
has rushed for more than a thousand yards this season. Dickerson stands in the pocket and hits Williams and Williams to the five yard line. The key here, great protection for Dixon Dickerson, and he throws the ball on a frozen rope. Well delivered. The post pattern, short post pattern by Reggie Williams, and what I like about that pass, it gives the receiver a chance to run after he catches it. Well, when you've got the battering ram, you shouldn't miss down in this close. Right is right, the fullback. Keith Freiberg out of Staten Island comes up with a superb defensive play here against Hayward. Now watch the right of your screen. You see him bust free on the block. Take Hayward on. There aren't many guys who can bring him down that way one on one. The junior linebacker did the job that time. Now it is second and goal after that loss of a couple. Bavaro and Ward exchange defensive signals. Dickerson to throw it. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. He hits the big fella. about number 34 his ability to catch the ball superb hands for someone who weighs 280 pounds now Jeff Van Horn to attempt the extra point Pittsburgh strikes early in the third quarter a very important series perhaps the most important of the game protection here a great shot arm and drills the ball in between three defenders soft hands by Hayward the key the offensive line protection teams are stepping in and leading his team to a touchdown in his first series Darnell Dickerson just did that and the key here was Billy Osborne, number 12. He comes down here and really kind of screens the inside away, and that allows Haywood to come right up the gut for the, to receive the throw from Dickerson. And Bill Osborne has done just about everything here in this game for Pittsburgh. Cleared out the inside. Haywood slipped in behind him, and the ball was well thrown. Now it's Jeff Van Horn to kick it off. Crowd back in the game. They take it deep. Ingram at the five. Cannot get away from number 25, Cornell Holloway, who has done a superb job on the special teams for Pitt. Tomorrow, 12.30 Eastern time, the aftermath of the big trade, Eric Dickerson goes to Indianapolis. All the details and reaction to that. Doubleheader Sunday, 12.30 Eastern time on CBS. Will Tony Dorsett be traded? He was a great star here at Pitt. We'll have details on that tomorrow also. Important series here for Syracuse. They still lead it 24 to 10. They run the draw play with Drummond. And he is wrapped up by Olsovsky. Now, in case you just snapped on the television set, Syracuse struck for 24 points in the first half. Pittsburgh changes quarterbacks, and the freshman directs them to an early score here in the third quarter. Makes it 24-10, crowd back in it. Here's the star of the game so far, Don McPherson. Syracuse unbeaten and untied hoping to go to a major bowl. If they can get past this game, the road would seem to indicate that they can wind up unbeaten. Lover coming in motion. McPherson on the roll. Being pursued, takes a hit, and it's incomplete. And now the, there's interference called near midfield. Jones working on Kane, coming over on him. 
But there's much more enthusiasm out there on the part of the Panther defense right now, which would indicate that the coaching staff worked them over in the locker room. Now that was Zeke Gatson, who was chasing McPherson, linebacker who can run at 4 3 9. We have pass interference on the offense. Is it Kane? Oh, oh, the other way. We thought it was defense at the end, number six, right there. Gary Richard went over the top. That was not pass offensive pass interference on Glover. Now, wait a minute. This is an offsetting penalty. He continued. All right. He continued with the call down there on the field. They're going to bring that ball back and do this play over. That was not a roughing the passer penalty either. So there were two separate instances of pass interference, but right now, Gadsden coming alive. This entire Panther defense back in it. They did not rough the quarterback on this play. That was not what the flag was. There was another pass interference call downfield. There is the great speed of Gadsden, an undersized linebacker, but from the backside, he's so dangerous because he's quick. College football is very much a game of enthusiasm. It's Pittsburgh defense, big down here for them. They've been played enthusiastically the second half. Almost 11 men up on the line. The all-out blitz. McPherson gets away beautifully, moving to the outside. They would have had a touchdown. If he had completed that pass to Kane, they would have gone the distance. It looked like the Chicago Bears of two years ago. Beautiful illustration here of the blitz. Terrell Austin, number 19, and 55 are both going to come in. Austin, number 19, times it perfectly. No one's there to pick him up, but McPherson does a sensational job of avoiding the rush. And then good coverage downfield, nearly picked off by Richard. Good coordination on defense. The way they're coming, they may set sail after this punt. Remember, they told Pat Hayden that they think they can block one coming through the middle. That snap, but it gets a bounce because it's artificial turf, and he got it off. Austin, hammered down at the 47-yard line. Great hit by number 40 of Syracuse. Brian LeBaron delivered the blow. We'll be right back. Perhaps. Well, that game was played in different weather between Syracuse and Pitt. Driving snowstorm. Syracuse jumped out to a 21-8 halftime lead. But the second half in that game was an entirely different story. The Panthers came all the way back, scoring 27 unanswered points, and they went on to a 35-27 victory. Now, here this afternoon, it was 24-3 at the half. Pittsburgh scores a touchdown to make it 24-10. They have just held Syracuse and their freshman quarterback, Darnell Dickerson, coming up for his second series. Here's Hayward turning the corner, battling his way to the 44-yard line. Arkansas winning in the Southwest Conference. Who will jump up and represent the Cotton Bowl? Well, Texas still has a shot. They're all over Texas Tech. And TCU not out of it down there either. We must get to the 42-yard line for a first down. Dickerson throws complete to the wide receiver. Check that. That was Lewis Riddick, number five, who slipped down to the backfield. He was the fullback. It was not Reggie Williams, but Riddick. Hey, Darnell Dickerson, you have to be awfully impressed with him. 19 years old is, his, again, his first game against a very good defense. But I tell you, he's a confident young man. Very confident. Mike Godfrey, the quarterback, has a great deal of confidence in him. Stewart brings in the play from Godfrey's sideline. Remember the coach calling all the plays now, and Dickerson facing another first down. He has been superb on first down. Here's one of the reasons why. 
And this time, the Syracuse defense ready for Hayward. He crashes inside the 35-yard line. David Bavaro, number 59, the first man to hit it. No, Brent, you see so many times a backup quarterback come in and spark a team. And I think the real reason is I think offensive linemen want to spark, need to be led. And when a, when a change of quarterback comes in, oftentimes that happens. This offensive line has now protected Dickerson well and opened up holes for Hayward. Three wide receivers. Dickerson straight back gets plenty of protection complete and it's a first down for the Panthers he works Osborne on that side for the first down tell you what Brent Billy Osborne has caught everything right in his hands really he doesn't use his body like many wide receivers does terrific hands now again Gottfried continues to shuttle in two or three different players and you can feel everything changing in this game from the crowd right on down to the players on the field. 7-28. Stewart, the slot man there to the left. Stand-up wide receiver. They run Hayward. Bus free. Hayward to the 10-yard line. Boy, that's an awesome sight for a defensive back when old Ironhead gets loose. Gets off the ball so quickly. Again, right on the snap count, he gets that momentum going, picked up a nice block by his guard, Stepnowski, and then he's into the, the backfield. You can't get him up high. You gotta get him down low. You need to cut him. Again, three substitutes from the sideline. Vernon Kirk, number 80, gives them an additional tight end. Seaman and Kirk are the double tights. still get a first down without scoring a touchdown but they would have to move the ball down inside the one yard line 640 to go now with coach McPherson looking on he knows how the entire tone and momentum of this game have rapidly changed behind the freshman quarterback Forced to throw on the run, incomplete. But a smart play. He didn't put it up for grabs. Threw the ball where nobody could catch it. Let's go downstairs to John Dockery. Doc. Thank you, Brent. I'm with uh, Craig Hayward's brother, Nate, also running back here with Pittsburgh. What were you telling Craig? Every time we get in there, nice, you can't go down. Every time you get the ball, you can't go down. And what about Dickerson? What does he mean to this team? Right now, he's a quick hand for us, man. Because right now, I think he's having a problem with himself or not scared of throwing interception, maybe. Right now, he just, just right now, give him his motivation right now for us. Okay, Brent, now back up to you. All right, John. Timeout has been called by the young quarterback. It's perhaps a wise call here. This is a big play, and we'll come right back with third down in a moment. His unit to do. Here's what he said moments ago. And the good defense, they're going to rush up field with a down lineman. The inside linebacker is going to stay and protect the draw. And the defensive backs play zone defense. Good defensive call. Got to watch the draw call when 34 is in that pit backfield. Got him off to the right. Dickerson, straight back, looking for Hayward to drop it off to him. He will not get the first down. Hammered out of bounds, David Holmes. I want to tell you that that play is somewhat like a draw play. So with the backers off, they were ready for Hayward in any kind of a delay coming out of that backfield. So now it is fourth down. A big call for Gottfried in this situation. He's down 24 to 10. He's got a long ways to go for a first down. And his field goal kicker missed earlier, as you recall. Call timeout so they can talk it over. He got a long to try for a touchdown. You got six minutes to go in the third quarter and an entire fourth quarter. I'm 
really surprised that they just don't send the field goal kicker out there and take the three. Well, it might be one of those situations, too, where he's lost some confidence in his field goal kicker. He's only 8 of 17 on the year and has missed one this today already. Now McPherson and his staff ready to call the defense again. Dickerson is dangerous on the run. That's what he featured in high school along with his passing ability. So you would think that they could get him rolling to the wide side here and try to create something. Or how about a quarterback draw, perhaps? Spread the defense out with a three-wide receiver formation and let it do it up the middle. Matt, are you surprised that they don't go for the three here? Yeah, I think it's too too long to go. I think the field goal is actually a good play, but the critical really was, play was an earlier miss, which put them in this dilemma. Had Van Horn kicked the field goal before half, it would have uh, been much more beneficial to go for the three here. Well, they've got a good record on fourth down, don't they? Well, there'll be no change there. Those two teams roll toward November 21st. Miami waits Notre Dame on the 28th. How about Arizona State, huh? What a job. So the biggest moment of this game so far with six minutes to go. It is fourth down. You know, they can get a first down, but again, they've got to get the ball inside the one-yard line. They'll try to get it on into the end zone in this situation. This is five yards for the first down, which would put them at about the half-yard line. Now, Williams and Stewart are the wide men, and Hurd coming here. There are three wide receivers. They bring Stewart in motion to the wide side of the field. Dickerson incomplete and Syracuse takes over good defense by Syracuse what they were trying to do is get the ball to Billy Osborne number 12 on a little option route he had a chance of either running inside or outside inside him, but the defense bracketed him to your left of your screen is number 12 Billy Osborne right there inside and outside on him and the ball was uh, was poorly thrown and too hard I'll tell you what also is so damaging in that series. You have used up two of your three timeouts. You're down to one. You're trailing by two touchdowns. 5.57 to go. Syracuse showing a double tight. They'll be real safe down here. And the Pittsburgh defense crawls all over the ball carrier. Johnston never had a chance. Great adjustments at halftime from this Pittsburgh defense because all we have seen this second half is tremendous penetration by the front. Johnson has nowhere to go. Asoski, number 50, 55, the middle linebacker, is the first one there, but they're getting a lot more penetration than they did the first half. Yeah, Patton, the first adjustment may have been the best one. Let's just hit somebody. Oh, yeah. Well, like I said, it's a game of emotion. They're playing much more like that now. Johnston and Drummond are the running backs behind McPherson. Motion. McPherson on the roll from the end zone throws back to the tight end Kelly wide open Austin will have to come across field and he belts him at the 42 yard line and takes him down what a great play call 36 yards an absolutely sensational call For the one thing you don't expect the team to be throwing it from the end zone with a lead like this and secondly never to your tight end but the action was the roll away and the throwback. Ordinarily a dangerous pass, but there's nobody there for Pat Kelly. That's the third big catch he's made today. And it shows you the confidence that the Syracuse coaching staff has in Don McPherson to allow a quarterback in the end zone to roll to the right and throw back. I mean, that can be deadly if you don't trust your quarterback. Johnston comes out to the 45. You know, Brent, we've seen Pat Kelly, the tight end, make three big catches today. He was recruited as a quarterback, and they switched him early on to tight end, but played the position like a quarterback. Didn't like to go over the middle, didn't like to get beat up. This year, he's played like a lineman. He's had a sensational year for Syracuse. So from Pitt Stadium in Pittsburgh, along with John Dockery and Pat Hayden, I'm Brent Musburger. Syracuse has led this all the way. They took the opening kickoff, marched down, booted a three-pointer. It's 24-10, and for Coach McPherson, quarterback McPherson. Pass for a couple, run for a third, throwing long again. Almost caught at the 20-yard line. Richard was there defensively. Terrific concentration, Brent, really, by both Kane and Richard. He's got him all by himself, which is, which is a tough task. 
Now, Kane knows the ball's coming. Richard has no idea where it is. Looks up at the last moment. As soon as he see the receiver put his hands up, Richard did a nice job of putting his hand up and knocking the ball away. That's great defense. Now it's third down, and you want to keep in mind number 26 against Coach Mack's offense, Zeke Gadsden. Richard goes with Kane. McPherson under pressure, cannot get it off. Gadsden came blasting across there on the blitz. Number 26 did it again. has been a play for quarterbacks all year long right at the screen. He is an outside linebacker, but 4-4 speed, as we said, runs in the track team. You're going to see Ososki, 55. He occupies really two men, and that allows Gatson to come clean. An important punt. A 10-man front. Gardner needs a good snap this time. Gets it off was run into at the 25-yard line. No penalty flag. Austin battles his way out to the 32-yard line. Gatson went in and almost blocked the punt. Yes. And for a moment, I thought that roughing the punter might be called. Well, he did a smart thing, Gatson did. He held the punter up, wouldn't let him give it his uh, Lawrence Olivier uh, routine. Watch Gatson after he actually runs into him. I don't think this is roughing, but he does run into him. He holds him up. Ball is away. He's backing off. And then he holds him up like that. Smart play by Gatson. Good, good non-call. Now Dickerson with the first down. He's rallying the Panthers here. Hayward to the 37-yard line. And the pit defense getting ready for its next series against Don McPherson. I'm sure they'll be reminded about how many times the tight end has come from. Well, Kelly has made uh, three catches for 105 yards and one touchdown. It's a 14-point Syracuse lead. Receivers. Off a fake to Hayward. Burnett giving chase. And he throws to the fullback, Prentice Wright. Right there in his left wrist, you see on Darnell Dickerson, that is the plays that they run. And as you can see, often the quarter the coach will send in either the formation or the play, and he just has to match up the second half. The coach might send in ADX curl. He knows the formation. Most quarterbacks these days are wearing those bands. Tight end Seaman limping a little bit as he comes off the field. He's been playing with an injury here. 2.30. Penalty marker is thrown, indicating we might have holding as Dickerson steps out of bounds. Good call, Brent. It was a hold on number 94, Paul Fraze. He was the man who was held. He declined the penalty, forced him to punt. Don't give Dickerson a chance. For McPherson, that clock can't move quickly enough. And for Gottfried, he'd like it to show a little slow motion up there. So Rasp into punt for the Panthers. Paul the short man. And Kane back deep. Booming punt. Drives Kane back to the 20 yard line for the fair catch. Downstairs to John Dockery. Doc. Thank you, Brent. Of course, uh, the Pittsburgh Panthers have a wonderful football tradition here. Many great stars, and four of those stars are still represented in the locker room. Their lockers are sealed shut as mementos. Tony Dorsett, Dan Marino, Hugh Green, and Bill 
Frelick, their locker room sealed shut. I wonder, Brent, how it is dressing next to it. Is it inspiration or intimidation next to those bygone legends? Now back to you. You know, Doc Green, Dorsett, and Frelick started their first game as a freshman, and only the fourth is out there now. Number 93, Mark Spindler. And the Panther defense crawled all over Drummond that time. Led by Oslovsky. You know, Brent, looking at the locker room there of Pittsburgh, it, uh, when I was going in the other day, actually, Hayward, he's so big, he's got two lockers. One's not big enough. Syracuse trying to start a tradition of its own. Resume one, I should say. You go back to the days of those great running backs. The blitz, McPherson steps away, turns the corner, and comes out to midfield. And look who runs him down from behind. After a 27-yard gain, Gatson pulls him down. The right guard, Blake Bednarz, really does a nice job picking up the blitz, and that allowed McPherson to get to the corner. Steps down. Blocks Osofsky, and then watch the fullback, Daryl Johnson, number 32, right there in the middle of your screen. He puts a block on Troy Washington, and McPherson high steps it right past him. So with the first down at midfield, they run Johnston straight ahead into the heart of that defense for a couple of yards, tough yards, before Grossman brings him down. And what the Pittsburgh defense cannot afford right now here is just allowing this Syracuse team to control the clock and have a long drive. Moore and Kelly to the left side of the formation. Boy, they call Kelly a tight end. He's like a wide receiver. Where 84 is always out there. And he's made some big catches against the Blitz. Through was Olsovsky, Jerry Olsovsky, the middle linebacker, number 55 from Youngstown, Ohio. Everybody is coming through. Olsovsky and 19, Terrell Austin, right up the middle. And they occupy them. The guards are already, they can't pick them up because the guards are occupied with linemen in front of them. Good defensive scheme. Snatch the handle. What has to happen there, Brent, is an offensive back has to step up in there and take that away. running out here in the third quarter and McPherson will use the opportunity to go over to the sideline to huddle with the coach. So college football on CBS will return after this message and a word from your local station. Syracuse faces a third and long. They have been lethal in this situation all season long. That's why they're 7-0. Let's see what they come up with. with a deep straight back complete for the first down hits Tommy Kane out of bounds at the 32 for a 19 yard gain so print just as a third quarter end and here's the, pr the problems that the Pittsburgh defense is presenting they're covering both guards ordinarily the guards will pick up the blitzing linebackers but when these two men blitz through here what the tackle has to come all the way in to try to pick up Osofsky that's too far for him to go Tackle's never going to get there. Kane's had another All-American day. Five catches, 100 yards, a touchdown. And they batter right straight ahead. Stoppel paving the way. The big tackle from Danbury, Connecticut. Pittsburgh's going to have a chance of coming back and winning this game. This defense on this series has to bow its neck and stop Syracuse offense. Day for Tim Brown. Moore, the wide man on the left. Stopped at the 30 yard line. This will be third down and seven. And let's check in with Jim Nance in New York. Jim? All right, thank you, Brent. Both Oklahoma and Nebraska moving a step closer today to the big showdown on November 21st. But the big story for the Sooners and Cornhuskers, their coach is 
Tom Osborne and Barry Switzer today will collect career wins number 145, which will tie them for the all-time Big 8 conference mark with Bud Wilkinson. So a three-way tie for all-time coaching victories in the Big 8 after today. Let's go back to Brenton Pat. And Coach Osborne will trade a couple dozen for a victory over his buddy Barry. That's going to be a great game. McPherson under pressure. One-on-one -on -one coverage, couldn't get Kane that time, and Richard had him cut off in front. Well, I mentioned Timmy Brown, and let's check in on how some of the Heisman candidates did. As everyone agrees, it's Tim Brown's Heisman to lose. And here's what he did, 173 yards and one touchdown. And he took it in the round down to the one-yard line. Put the entire Navy defense in a couple of weeks. We'll probably be seeing him in action against Alabama. This would be a 45-yard field goal by Bessley. up at the 12-yard line by Austin. He battles his way out to the 18-yard line. I think it was Burt Grossman who got a big old paw up there, Brent Blockett. And kept Pittsburgh's hopes alive here with 13.20 to go. Syracuse leading it by 14 points. Sometimes the special teams can give you that spark. Oftentimes it doesn't have to be the offense or defense. It's a big play by the special teams. There's Austin, the man who fielded that blocked kick. And now it'll be up to Dickerson to see if he can drive this offense. We'll be right back in bed. It's 24-10, Syracuse ahead. Grossman, you're right. Right over the center, he's going to come right through and put up his big old paw. And the ball was actually kicked a little bit low by Vesseling as well, which helped him. See, that's a tough block for the center, too, when you got a load 6'6", 250 pounds over you. On first down, Dickerson can't get it off. Hammered by Burnett at the 10-yard line. Boy, Brent Burnett has played well, hasn't he? He sure has. Three and a half sacks today for him. Now it's second and long for the freshman quarterback. Throws to Riddick. Slips down at the 16. And it'll be third and long. You know, Brent, uh, Bill Osborne was injured a little bit earlier in the uh, in the third quarter, and he has not been back, and that hurts him because he is very much their possession receiver over the middle. Well, let's also remember that on an earlier drive, Pittsburgh used two of its three timeouts. They have only one remaining. Syracuse has all three of its timeouts, the difference between an experienced quarterback and a freshman. A great pass to Hurd, working the near sideline, close to a first down, but they may be short of it. Well, that, there was a major league throw there by Dickerson. That ball has to go a long way, throwing the deep out. He locked in on the receiver, but he has the arm, as you can see, to get it there. Heard had it, but when he came back to catch the ball, he may have not quite made it. Going to have to go for it. They've got about a yard and a half to go, and you know who's in that backfield. With Osborne, unable to go because of that injury. Seaman quickly gets over to Ironhead's side. Battles his way for the first down. Syracuse indicating that they stopped him. Let's see where they spot it. So they'll move the chains. Yeah, Brent, give the offensive line some credit because everybody in the stadium knew that Ironhead was going to get it, but no penetration allowed him to get the ball and run over the left side. And four substitutes enter the game for Pitt. Williams, Hurd, and Stewart.
Stewart, the wide receivers. Dickerson's been throwing on first down. Second and short as a result of that run up the middle. They've got a lot of guys going deep downfield, but nobody under in the short little zone there. That's where, again, where they miss Osborne, who caught four or five passes in about the 10 to 12 yard range. Tucking quickly onto the field to give Pittsburgh 11 players. Short of the first down, David Babaro, 59, leads the defensive charge against Ironhead. And it's a third and about, oh, two or three, Brent, and you have to look at it if you're Mike Godfrey, there's you have two downs to pick up the first down. And you've got you know who. Exactly. Although time is beginning to obviously become a factor, 10 43, and you're down by two touchdowns. Coach Mack keeping a careful eye on that clock, too. He's done a splendid job, hasn't he, in Syracuse? Hayward squeezes close to that first down. Derek Ward, the other inside linebacker, number 52, the senior from Waterbury, Connecticut. So we mentioned Tim Brown. Top player out west would have to be Gaston Green of UCLA. And he will not play in the second half because of that injury. So a tough afternoon for Gaston Green. I'm sure you'll call the SID at UCLA and see that Gaston's okay this week. I, folks, I don't want you to misread that, but Pat did get a call during the week saying, hey, don't overlook Gaston Green in the Heisman voting. Well, he thought we had given it to uh, Tim Brown a week ago. But clearly, when you play at Notre Dame and you're the kind of athlete Tim Brown is, uh, you have to be considered the favorite. Gaston Green is a tremendous athlete out there. Yeah, if the sure injury is. will affect him. Yeah, and I, you know, I hope that injury is not serious, that uh, he's able to come back and play and do as well as he has all year long. So it's fourth and Ironhead coming up for the Panthers. It's like to be a mama and a papa and have your son called Ironhead all afternoon on network television. Yeah, you need you can pick out a nice name, Craig. Yeah, it's you know, a lovely yeah, name. Yeah. Out of Passaic, New Jersey. You met his brother a little earlier. Now, he did play on this Panther team, but he was redshirted because of an injury. Here's his younger brother, ready to go to war. Offensive line must prevent penetration. Well, Dickerson says, I'm going to say, but you know who was applauding that, folks? Number 34 just stood back there and gave a standing ovation. I don't want to plow into those big guys one more time. Here. Oh, here comes Dickerson. Now, he just takes the ball. And the freshman goes up over the top for the first down. And Craig Hayward says, hey, way to go. <laughs> That's what I like, man. Move the chains without me banging his eight and a quarter <laughs> size helmet into the middle of that defense. First and ten now. Dickerson down the middle, and Williams dropped the ball at the 40-yard line. One of the things about Dickerson's pass, it's a hot ball, folks. I watched him in practice, and uh, mm, Ball gets there very, very quickly. And sometimes that's part of the process of becoming a, a good college quarterback is knowing when to put some juice on it, when to take it off. That particular pass, you needed to have some, uh, some steam on it. Arizona State still holding on to that lead. It'll be much easier for their defense without Gaston Green. Won't it? Adam Walker checks in at tailback. Slips out of the backfield as a receiver. Dickerson under a lot of pressure. Do you see him get free? What a creative wow. quarterback he's going to be here at Pittsburgh. Oh, downstairs to John Dockery. Doc. And Brent, you're looking at a young new quarterback who's coming of age. A little bit of a scare down here on the uh, Syracuse sideline. As Don McPherson took a helmet to his throwing hand, it's bruised, but 
they say you're going to be back in the game. Nothing serious. Now back to you. All right, John. Thank you. I know all about that. I broke uh, my hand twice on the top of the helmet. Yeah. You left a few dents on Randy White's <laughs> yeah. helmet, yeah, Charlie dude. Waters, and a few of those guys. <laughs> Surgically removed my fingers from Randy White's helmet one year. <laughs> He thought you were coming back to one of those replacement games. That's why I went in early. <laughs> he was open. <laughs> Down now. Dickerson got his backs out. He gets good time, and it's complete. They've got a first down at the 35-yard line. He hits Hosea Hurd, the sophomore from Valdosta, Georgia, number 85, and he's another of the burners. ISO of Hurd here. The best thing, watch him after he catches the ball. He doesn't waste any time. He turns right upfield and picks up an extra six or seven yards. Comes back for the ball. That's a great way, the way he came back. And then he turned right up. But there was an ineligible man downfield. Oh, the God. play is being wiped out because of a penalty. So Hurd's performance goes for naught. And he'll bring it back to the other side of the 50-yard line. And that's a big penalty. Wow. That's going to make it third and forever. And, you know, you don't have third and forever on the wristband. I guarantee it. On the offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. So 12.30 Eastern time. Again, Eric Dickerson is traded to Indianapolis. The Rams wind up with two firsts, a second, a third, and Greg Bell. Cornelius Bennett goes from Indianapolis to Buffalo. That's the second game of the doubleheader. Will Tony Dorsett also be traded? We'll be checking out all those stories tomorrow. 12.30 Eastern time. Now on third, and the defense coming home. Burnett comes free. Dropped on the far side. Reggie Williams simply dropped the ball over there, and it would have given Pittsburgh a first down. They'll have to punt now with 8.53 to go. That's two drops by Reggie Williams on this drive. Both of them would have been first down. I thought he was concerned perhaps at the sideline, although he's clearly inbounds by a long shot. That's a big, big play. Rasp. Standing at the 25. Kane at the 9. Down at the 10. Hard to cut back here on the artificial turf. A 51-yard punt. So we'll come back, and Syracuse will be at back. On the Pittsburgh campus, there are classrooms in that 40-story building over there. Beautiful, isn't it? And close by, this wall still stands. And for fans here in Pittsburgh, it brings back one of the greatest memories ever. 1960, and Ralph Terry fires, and Bill Mazeroski delivers the home run over the head of Yogi Berra, which gave the Pittsburgh Pirates the world championship. Now, the ballpark is no longer there, but the wall still stands. Well, it's a great sports city. Pittsburgh Steelers are always a hot topic on those four Super Bowl rings. Couldn't grab one for the thumb. <laughs> Pirates are on a rebound. They had a good crowd for an exhibition NBA game the other night, too. The Nets and the Lakers stopped by. First down at the 10. They run Drummond. He's out to the 13. Second half has been all Pittsburgh. That defense of Pittsburgh has really changed their philosophy. They're getting a great uh, deal more penetration. They're playing with much more emotion. And this is, again, a key series. But they need three plays and force the punt, get the ball back. But Don McPherson has not made the big mistake. He's kept things well under control. Changes the play. Gets his time incomplete. You know, the point I want to make about Don McPherson, one of the reasons why he went to Syracuse is because Coach McPherson said, I will let you be a quarterback. And Don felt there were a lot of schools would not give him the opportunity because he was a black quarterback coming out of high school. Max says, doesn't matter to me if you can do the job. He struggled a little bit early on in his career over at Syracuse, but not now. And more and more in college football, we see the emergence of the black quarterback. It used to be in the underground, they said they weren't smart enough, but that is not true. And McPherson is making believers out of a lot of folks. 
with the way he operates it. Let's take a look at him for the last three weeks. That's against Penn State, Colgate, and Pittsburgh. Now you might say Colgate isn't much, but how about Penn State and Pittsburgh? Last year's national champions, now Pittsburgh. Can't get a first down here, so Gardner will punt it away. You gotta give Don McPherson a lot of credit. He's been a calm leader for this team. He does the job on the field. Pittsburgh defense did their job. Under pressure. Austin will let it go out of bounds. Well, we've talked about the Bulls and where Syracuse might go. Let's get out of John Dockery, Doc. And Brett, the 11 Bulls are represented here today, including the Sugar Bowl and Bill Kearney are not here to see Pittsburgh. I know it's Syracuse you're interested in. We're vitally interested in Syracuse. With If they do muster out a victory here today, we'll, they will loom very much in the forefront of our picture. So we are definitely interested in Syracuse. Is it also because they were in the Final Four in basketball and have a good relationship with the city? Well, we would hope that they would want to come back to our city, having been there for another reason eight months ago. So we would hope that if their football team uh, was given the invitation to come to our city, that their fans would certainly support them and follow them back because they had a wonderful time when they were there before. Well, thank you, Bill. Okay, Brent. Yeah, I might go down and watch them. They promised me something like Indiana Syracuse. Good matchup, perhaps, against LSU. Dickerson, incomplete. Dropping back was Ward into that pass coverage. Leading by two touchdowns, seven minutes to go. They pretty much know that the freshman will have to put it up 71 points. I remember when Mike Gottfried was the coach at Kansas, they upset Oklahoma one year. Well, Brent Pittsburgh has lost a second wide receiver, Michael Stewart, number 30, kind of limped off. Hayward on the draw. Breaks free. He's quick for a man his size. Isn't he? 23 more yards. And great for a big guy. He's a finesse player as well as a power player. And it's like when the defensive back comes up and hits him, it's like a ladybug hitting the truck. What did that uh, Naval Academy defensive captain say after last Saturday? He said, I thought I was trying to tackle the USS Iowa. play gives his receiver just a, a chance but the defender never had a chance well probably the sentimental choice for the Heisman this year would be Gordy Lockbaum of Holy Cross I don't think he'll win it but he figures to be up there in the leading vote getters and this afternoon he scored another touchdown I think that's about 16 touchdowns for the season and that probably leads anybody else that we're talking about two other men not to be overlooked our quarterbacks Jamel Holloway and Steve Taylor Holloway at Oklahoma Taylor at Nebraska they'll square off on the 21st there was a whistle blown it looked like one of the offensive linemen on the left side jumped a little bit toward it we haven't had too many penalties here this afternoon it's a well, well played game it's really important for Pittsburgh to get the ball into the end zone quickly. 6.34 left in the game. So time, obviously, is their enemy. They need two touchdowns to get back into it, and they'll need a two-point conversion to and win I was going to say, you know, interesting thought process here. Pittsburgh, if they can score, might want to go right away for the two. Well, it was the same dilemma that Nebraska faced, remember, in the Orange Bowl a few years ago when they played Miami. Yes, that's probably the smarter play. You should get it early. Because if you have to go for it late and get the two, you still wind up at least with the top. So you want to go for your win early if you can. 6.30, of course, first things first. They're going to get the ball in the end zone. Dickerson dropped it over the head. That was not a well-thrown ball, but the defensive player was alertly dropping back, and you know who that is, Burnett. He's been all over the field. Well, here they are, and this afternoon's routes by these two teams. Taylor rushed for a touchdown and threw for four more for Nebraska. And Jamel Holloway rushed for a touchdown. 
I'll make a prediction right now that the winner of the November 21st game will win the national championship. They'll beat anybody they play in the Orange Bowl. So people at Miami might disagree. Dickerson stepping away to the left. And he's forced out on that far sideline. He stepped into the 19-yard line, out of bounds. But he picked up about a half of what he needed. He didn't force the ball, lived to see another day. It's going to be about, what, fourth and maybe seven? You know, make that about eight or nine. Again, I can't stress enough not having Bill Osborne in the game at this part. This is his kind of down. You know, one of the toughest plays for a freshman quarterback has got to be this sort of touch pass right now. When you just need nine yards, you got to drop the ball off perfectly, find the man in the seam. You're not going to have a lot of time. And there's their last time out. They've exhausted their timeouts with 6.22 to go. So even if they score, it'll be real tough now, and we'll be right back. That's what they discussed over on the Pittsburgh sideline. Wing spread right 66, ZNX match. Wing spread right 66, ZNX match. Z and X, uh, Brent, refers to wide receivers, and I think what they're talking about doing is running a, a two wide receivers to a side type of set and then run a crossing route, which is the smash part of it. But what was the first thing he wanted to know? He wanted to know if Billy Osborne was available. He was not. Still hurt. Nordic is right behind the quarterback. They put two wide men to the right. The protection. Inside the 10 yard line. Hey, way to work. Ball was well thrown. Tootin, number 81. It was a crossing route from both sides of the field. The ball could have been caught, although I'll tell you what, the ball had an awful lot of juice on it. That's the one you have to take some something a little bit off of it. So now McPherson will go to work on that clock. 6.17 to go here. Johnston. Let's get an update from Jim Nance in New York. Jimmy. All right, Brent, out in Provo, they're calling Sean Covey the next great BYU quarterback. Sophomore making his first career start. Showing good poise here and finding Fred Winningham on a five-yard flip. And BYU in front after being down by 10 early. Go back to Brenton Penn. And back here at Pitt Stadium with 5.49 to go. Syracuse 24 and Pittsburgh 10. This would be the eighth straight win for the Orange men. They close in on a possible major bowl bid. You heard the Sugar Bowl say they're interested in them. Of course, the host team down there will be the winner of the Southeastern Conference. LSU still has a big game coming up against Alabama. And if you want to think ahead about the Syracuse schedule, they go up against Navy, Boston College, and West Virginia. Right now, the Orange men have used their first timeout here. And we'll come right back in a moment. 30 Eastern time, we know that for sure. You'll see one of two good ones from the South. Those are the two options. Boy, if we see Florida, you'll see Emmett Smith. If you see Florida State and Auburn, you'll see a pair of teams in the top ten. So we'll have great action out of the South. This afternoon, we're showing you the best team in the East, Syracuse. And with 5.28 to go, they lead it 24 to 10. Well, Miami of Ohio wins again. They got a chance to go back to the California Bowl. They run the fullback right straight ahead out to the 25. Coach Tim Rose from the cradle of coaches down there. They got a game coming up against the other Miami. Maybe they'll be able to upset them. <laughs> you like those Miami of Ohio scores, don't you? You have a son attending there. Not a, not a player. <laughs> I have to pay the tuition. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> Pittsburgh defense really needs a turnover here. But again, Syracuse has been very good in this department. Only six fumbles all season long. Go 
Lewis made another great catch. He plays wide receiver like a center fielder, doesn't he? You think that's Sam Blair. Paul Blair. Sam Blair. Plus, you think that's Paul Blair going out after a fly ball. You know, at the conclusion of the broadcast, we're going to select a Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team, and Chevrolet will donate a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of both Pittsburgh and Syracuse. Gatson will see if he can get something going down the middle of this time. Gardner gets it off. Austin picks it up on the bounce, and he's quickly taken out of bounds near the 40-yard line. Well, tonight on CBS, you'll start the evening with your local news and then the network news. And coming up after that at 8 o'clock, my sister, Sam. And that'll be followed by Everything's Relative. And then leg work. And from CBS News, West 57th Street. That's all tonight on CBS. Here this afternoon, it has been all Syracuse in the first half. Pitt mounted a rally in the second half, but they were unable to sustain it. And We've got to tip our hat to that Syracuse defense. Yeah, it's a sensational job. They have all year, although the offense has gotten most of the credit, as always. Now there's a diving catch at the 35-yard line as David Holmes, who has also played a spectacular game defensively, you are comes right. up with the interception. You're right. That's his third interception of the year, and he's also made some terrific uh, tackles on Ironhead. Tell you what, in spite of the interception there by Dickerson, he's going to have a very good career here at Pittsburgh. He's got a live arm. He's got nothing to be ashamed of. He's really going to grow into the position. I agree. Mississippi, Florida, Auburn, going to be a dandy in Auburn. Mississippi State against Alabama with Bama favored there. Kansas State against Oklahoma State. Roman runs hard for the first down. And they keep the clock moving. Pittsburgh unable to stop it now. It'll be slowed momentarily while they move the chains, and then it'll be restarted with Owens coming in from the sideline for Syracuse. Fred, this is the second time we've seen Syracuse, and the second time I've been very impressed with this offensive line. Very few times have you seen the Pittsburgh defense, a good defense, have any headway, making a great deal of penetration. This offensive line has done a nice job. Turnell Sims, Blake Bednars, John Garrett the center, John Flannery, and Craig Stoffel. Whistle sounds and the flags come down. Well, what has to happen for this Syracuse team to win the national championship, Pat? Well, one thing I think is they need to, they need a little luck. Obviously, they need to have Miami lose, and then of course they have to win the rest of their games. But if they they're going to win the rest of their games, if they can keep spreading the ball around, like we saw in the first half, they did that. And again, they've come back this whole game and been able to look at all that, all the different possessions that the different people have had. Kelly, the tight end, three big catches, 105 yards. I mean, that's real tough to do. And we, when you put that up, you forget how good their defense is. The only thing I think about Syracuse is their special teams have not been great this year. 3.15 remaining. Owens. What do you think? Do you think uh, Syracuse has a chance uh, for a national champion? They need some help, I guess. Yeah, hey, I agree with you. Uh, there are a lot of teams that have to climb over, you know, and uh, 
There are the unbeatens right now, and again, Oklahoma, Nebraska winner, looks like the champion to me. Although you've got to give Miami a great deal of credit for the way they came back against Florida State. And LSU and Auburn are both sitting there with that one tie. Auburn's got a very tough schedule the last few weeks of the season. They're in heavy tonight, for example, against Florida. McPherson turns around and keeps the clock moving here toward the 220 mark. Let's check in for an update. Let's go to Jim Nance in New York, Jim. All right, Brent. Duke snapped a four-game losing streak today, beating Georgia Tech 48-14. to The performance of the day in college football, Duke quarterback Steve Slayton set an ACC record with six touchdown passes, perhaps taking a page from Duke coach Steve Spurrier's playbook. Of course, he was the Heisman Trophy winner from Florida. Let's go back to Brent and Pat. All right, Jim. Thank you. McPherson. The clock down inside at two minutes. Owens breaks free. Gets the first down at 140. You know, it was interesting watching Syracuse move the ball here right now. There were some comments about why Coach McPherson kicked a field goal last week late against Colgate. One of the first things we asked him yesterday, and, and he said, because I would have scored another touchdown if I didn't kick the field goal. He said, I had about third and fourth and real short. He said it wasn't even my last series of the game. So he said, I, did, I didn't want to run it up with a touchdown, so I kicked the field goal. It was a second team kicker. Yeah, he said I put my second team kicker in and, and took the three. <laughs> Owens. Well, they, faces. Yeah, but they still can have a very successful year. They can uh, win the rest of their games as good as their competition. And they could get into a very nice bowl game as well. And it's a young team, I think, that will build. Mike Godfrey wants to come back and throw the ball this year. And next year as well, he has the ability to do so. Of course, the big one will be Penn State. Well, I guess he closed out the season with the freshman now. Dickerson, the quarterback. No doubt. Syracuse is going to run a clock out on them here. Drummond inside the 30 and it continues to tick away and take a snap and kneel down here Syracuse will go to 8 and 0 a great start for the Orange men their fans can be proud of the way this team has played this year now the one bad note for coach McPherson today of course is Ted Gregory the nose guard went out early but the backup did a good job and coach Godfrey comes across to shake hands with coach Mack so let's go downstairs to John Dockery. Doc? What about Gregory? I think it's just the same thing. I don't think it's any more. Hey, nice seeing you. I saw you. Remember, it was the first man I met you, huh? Yeah, that's a big man. Iron Head. Okay. Coach, what about this? What? Coach, what about, uh, what about Gregory? Gregory, I think is, I don't think he's any worse than he was. Just when he fully extended it, it gave away a little bit on him. So I don't think he doesn't feel it's any worse than it was before. We just kept him out because he couldn't push off it. You know, you have three more to go. Right. Undefeated. Uh, we got uh, eight down, one to go. We're going to the Navy next week, and that's it, John. See, we couldn't throw it anymore because we had to be out of here. CBS had to be out of here by uh, six, John. You've been listening to us. Okay, Brent, now back up to you. <laughs> he's been talking to the affiliates. Hey, what a great politician do you think, huh? He could be the mayor of Boston. <laughs> Let's go to Jim Hanson, New York. Jimmy? Uh, all right, Brent. Dick McPherson may be taking him one game at a time, but really all that's left for the Orangemen from an undefeated regular season might be Boston College and West Virginia. They should easily beat Navy next week. We'll come back with scores and highlights here on CBS in just a moment. Pittsburgh, Brent Musburger and Pat Hayden. All right, Jim, thank you. And here it was 24-10, the Orangemen with a win. They stay unbeaten in our Chevrolet, most valuable players of this game. For Syracuse, we're going to give it to their entire defensive backfield. However... For the Pittsburgh team, we'll go with Zeke Gadsden, their blitzing linebacker. Now, the defensive backfield for Syracuse forced one quarterback to the bench, intercepted a pass on the other one, and they were a standout, and a check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated by Chevrolet to each school's general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students in all chosen 
academic field. So uh, again, a few points about that Syracuse defense, I think, Pat Hayden, because uh, they were a standout throughout the game. Well, you know, the, the, everybody talks about their offense and how exciting they are, which they are, but the defense really puts them in a position to do that. I've been most impressed with this team, and you know, I don't think we talked enough about Dick McPherson. I think he's done a great job of preparing this team to play every week. Yeah, you know, and the other McPherson, Don, the quarterback. Let's take a look at a couple of key moments involving number nine. The tight end caught only three balls today, but for more than 100 yards, Pat. And the one touchdown. This was it was actually started by McPherson's uh, athleticism. Again, this is the dimension a guy like this can give you. Breaks a little bit of a tackle there. There's Gatson right on his back, but still has enough arm strength to get the ball to the tight end. And this is a guy I think has really come on for Syracuse, this tight end who's who's been a silent star for the team. And a little bit later, Tommy Kane. Kane, that versatile all-around athlete who was actually discovered in a basketball camp. But he wasn't big enough to be a basketball player at Syracuse. But the football coach got a call and said, I think we've got an athlete up here in the Montreal area who may be able to help you. And Kane is maturing into one of the better wide receivers that we've seen. The national picture now. And uh, Syracuse, I think, certainly has an opportunity. We showed you their schedule to go unbeaten the rest of the way and wind up in a major bowl. We talked about the Sugar Bowl, but it's not out of the realm of the possible. They wind up in the Cotton Bowl, the Fiesta Bowl, one of the others. Well, I have not seen Nebraska, but I was very much impressed with Oklahoma. We saw them against Texas. So we're, of course, going to get a chance to see Nebraska later on the year. Miami is a very good football team. I think Miami is the type of team that can beat in Oklahoma because they throw the ball. All right. Thanks, Pat. <laughs> well, once again, our final score here, Syracuse winning for the eighth straight time, 24 to 10. Now, next Saturday, CBS will have more great college football action for you. You'll see either Georgia take on 10th-ranked Florida or Florida State at Auburn. And tomorrow, the NFL continues with a doubleheader, and that starts at 12.30 Eastern with the NFL Today.